Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Czech blog. I'm James Phelps, editor of the blog, and I'm back here today with Warren Williams, Czech mentor, Czech blog author, and founder of Warren Williams Coaching in the UK. We're back outside again today, Warren. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. And as you see, this time it's a lot brighter. Yeah. So, um, yeah, happy to be outside, back in, in nature, and um, appreciating the gift that we have of Mother Nature shining its rays of energy on us. Yeah, I'm jealous. I need to get outside too. Well, you're in SoCal. So <laughs> I'm not even sure if you are actually in SoCal. I know you're in California. I know it's very warm out there anyway. So. Actually, I'm up in Seattle today, but it's, it's nice. Oh, and okay. It's generally nice weather in Seattle here too. We share that affinity for rain in our, our different parts of the okay. world. So okay. I, can, uh, I, I definitely get the gift of sun. When, when you have yes. it, so. Yeah, when you miss it. Yes, so today, uh, I understand we're gonna talk about the power of thought and how yeah. we can use it to change our reality. Yeah, definitely. So, um, getting right into it, um, you know, obviously, there's so much talk about thought. And you know, one of the things I always say to people is, people often, you know, we express what we think with our words, but we don't really think about the words that we're using and understanding the power of it. So just to give an example of that. Um, so people say, um, they don't say, you know, um, this is on my, on my brain. They say, this is on my mind. Yeah. So they're already saying, they already, already understand the differentiation between the brain and the mind. Yeah. You know, but then when you start to talk to them, talk to them about thought, they start to think, what do you mean the power of thought? I'm like, well, you actually express the mind. So you know the difference between the mind and the brain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thought is so powerful. Um, you know, and something that I always say to people is thought has shape, weight, and form. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think something, then automatically your, your cells start to in, in, inhibit, or sorry, not inhibit, express that thought. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something that Paul Czech, you know, said to us is, your thoughts um, move at the speed of thought. Mm -hmm. And it can enter your cells so quickly that mm -hmm. no therapy will get you better than the thoughts that you project because those move faster into your body than any therapist can help. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, and this leads into this story that I was going to talk about, which is, um, you know, the famous story of Norman Cousins, where, you know, he had cancer, um, terminal cancer, and he was given six months to live. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he checked himself into, sorry, he, he was in the hospital and he was looking around and around the, around the room, um, he just saw people that were just depressed and just defeated and just waiting to die. And their thought was, I'm going to die soon. Mm -hmm. And they initially get this thought because they're told by the doctor that you only have X amount of time to live. Now, studies have shown that when people are told by a doctor you have X amount of time to live, they typically die around the time the doctor told them because yeah. they think that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So their thought personifies the reality that they think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he was in the hospital and he said to himself, what am I doing here? And um, he checked himself out of the hospital and went to a hotel. And this was back in the late 70s, I think. Um, so he asked one of his friends to get him, I think it only had Betamax back then. And he said, right, just get me all the comedies you can find anywhere around and just bring them to me. Mm -hmm. And he just sat in his bed and he was just watching comedies for the next three months, mm -hmm. every day, all day, every day. Yeah. And he beat cancer wow. through thought and through laughter. And because he's quiet, he was a broadcaster as well for about 20 years. And um, he said he wanted to try to understand how this happened. And I mean, you know, total remission. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he basically found that um, upon research that there's two um, neurochemical reactions that happen in the body which are interleukin and interferons which are naturally producing um, and they kill cancer they mm -hmm. actually kill the cancer cells and they're produced through laughter mm -hmm. so he was like saying well you could buy the drug interleukin and interferon and um, to get the same amount of effects you'd have to spend about a million dollars a year when you could just laugh every day yeah yeah. And so he said, okay, so I changed my thought through laughter and that destroyed the cancer cells mm -hmm. because that's what it does. And, you know, he, he went into remission. Mm -hmm. So that just shows you the power of thought. And, you know, studies have also shown that people that are in hospital that focus on being sick don't heal anywhere near as fast as people that focus on getting well. Yeah. So just 
the association, and this goes back to the last thing we spoke about with stress and the labels, just the association of the thought changes the reality because thought manifests in the cells. So once we understand this, then we understand that we can change our reality with how we think of something. So when sometimes people meet someone or they know someone and they say, every time that I see that person, he makes me sick to my stomach, mm. you've already established a specific thought with a, an attachment to an event. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that event or person comes to you, you make yourself sick to your, sick to your stomach because you think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. So then you may hang around that person and be constipated and wonder why and then go to different therapists mm -hmm. and not understand that your thoughts are manifesting the reality that the therapist can't get rid of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and that's the first thing we, we have to understand or get the clients and the people listening to this to understand. Um, and I, another thing that we know that um, 95 of the thoughts that we, sorry, 90% of the thoughts we have today are the same that we had yesterday, and 95% of those thoughts are negative. Yeah. So how do we expect to change our lives when mm. our predominant thought is negative? And even if you say something positively once every six hours, it's no more, no more powerful than your prevailing or dominant thought. Mm. So we train ourselves to think negatively and then we expect our bodies to react positively. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of labeling, you know, understanding of the power of thought. Um, so how do we change that? So there's something called the Grand Canyon effect. So the Grand Canyon yeah. effect states, uh, you, I know you know this. Yeah, so um, yeah, so if you stand over the Grand Canyon and you shout, I want to be well, what comes back is I want to, to be, be well. well. Yeah. Rather than, and what comes back is what, and some of your listeners are probably like, well, that's okay. No, <laughs> you're wanting. That's right. What comes back is wanting, or I want to be successful. What comes back mm -hmm. is you want to be successful, okay, yeah. but not, you're not actually successful. Yeah. So if you stand over the Grand Canyon saying, I am healthy, yeah. one of Paul's you know, favorite sayings is, um, I am healthy, I'm happy, I'm whole. Yeah. yeah. So if you stand over the Grand Canyon and you shout that, what comes back to Jesus is, is the exact same thing. Yeah. So the Grand Canyon effect with what we're now saying to our, our listeners is, don't state what you want, state it as it is. Yeah. State, I am healthy. I have no cancer. I, my cancer is in remission. Um, mm -hmm. I have great digestion. I have great energy. I'm structurally aligned. I have no pain. Mm -hmm. and then you're, it doesn't mean straight away there's no pain. It just mm -hmm. means you're not helping to reinforce the pain. Yeah. So that's what we first of all do is we change the negative to positive. Even if we don't think that way, we just say it. Yeah. And the more we say it, we're starting to change how we think. Yeah. You know, the more positives we do, we outweigh the negatives. Yeah. And that's, you know, and it's really that simple. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, you know, so we spend so much time focusing on what we can't do versus mm -hmm. what we can do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things I would say to people is what's, they focus on what's going to happen or what's going to happen when they don't do a specific thing. And I say, well, what's going to happen when you do do that thing? Yeah whatever it is you want to do. Like, yeah. you know, so we have certain clients that I want to be slim. No, don't want to be slim. Be slim mm -hmm. by saying, I'm so grateful for the abundance of energy I have. I'm so grateful that I love my body. I'm so grateful. Let the mind latch onto that and then your body will start to try to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. We're just trying to get clients to take a moment and start spending more time talking about what they have as in not what they have right now, but what they have by saying what they have to get what they have. Yeah. yeah. So I know that sounds a bit complex. You know, again, <laughs> but, um, so let's give you an example of that. Yeah. So let's say you have back pain and um, you want to get out of that back pain, but right now your reality is you actually have back pain right at this moment. So as we said, don't reinforce that by the negative thought. I have back pain. It doesn't mean your back pain is going away right now but don't reinforce it with the power of your thoughts. So you have back pain right now. So you start saying to yourself, my back is fine. I have great spinal alignment or whatever it is, whatever the condition is, you start saying these positive thoughts whenever you associate with that thought because otherwise you're creating um, an emotional blockage in that area and energy can't flow in that area because you've created an emotional blockage. So, you start saying positive associations with that pain. And therefore, what happens is the energy is helping to soothe that pain. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. You still have to do all your therapy and your digestive wellness programs, such as eating properly and drinking water and all that sort of stuff. But the software, which is the mind, emotions, and psyche, is more powerful than the hardware, which is the muscles, tissues, and tendons. So to assist the muscles, tissues, and tendons with whatever protocol you've been advised by your therapist or check practitioner, you have to now make sure that your software is supporting that by constantly promoting the idea of success for the outcome that you want. And that's pretty much what the clients have to do. And that's kind of like a summary of this whole thing about the power of thought. But um, adding to that, one, you know, another great tip for people listening is develop a mantra that works. Mm-hmm. I could say ones, but you know, if you, if you say your own mantras, it's personalized to you. So, you know, we kind of spe- spoke about Paul Check's mantra, I'm healthy, I'm happy and whole. Paul uses yeah. that a lot with clients, as you know. Yeah. So if people want a mantra, that's a good one to start with. Um, and the more you say that, the more you buy into it. And um, the universe solidifies a specific thought. And let's say the thought is, you know, an ounce right now. The more you say that thought, you give power to that thought. It becomes two ounces, three ounces, four ounces, and to the point where it's so powerful, the universe creates space for it to manifest. Yeah. And, you know, all successful business people in the world tell you about the power of belief and, you know, thinking successful outcomes. Yeah. So that was great. Yeah. Two, two big um, takeaways, I think, for me, right? That, that first point that thoughts move at the speed of thought, right? Mm. That is amazing, and that story of Norman Cousins was just um, yeah. brilliant, and, and that idea that, um, right, uh, because thoughts move at the, the speed of thought, the best and first thing you can do is, uh, you know, change your thoughts, be positive. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, definitely. And uh, that Grand Canyon test, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that, and Paul talks about that both uh, in our uh, check coaching, but also in our PPS success. And yep. it's a great way to refocus your thoughts on the positive rather than yeah. the negative. Yeah, and you know, people listening to this will probably think, "Oh no, it's not that easy." But like like Paul says so many times, the problem is we always think it has to be more complicated than it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I finished with this one thing that Bruce Lee said. Um, I love this. And Bruce Lee had a, had a degree in philosophy. And um, he said, when he started to learn martial arts, he thought that a punch was just a punch and a kick was just a kick. As he started to master the aspects of martial arts, he realized a punch was more than a punch and a kick was more than a kick. Mm-hmm. But once he totally mastered the, the aspects of martial arts, he realized the punch was just a punch. And a kick. <laughs> it was pure That's simplicity. Great. That's great. So this stuff is simple, but it works. Great. Well, thanks, Warren. I appreciate it. And uh, let's do it again next month. Yep, no worries. All right. Take care. Bye, Warren.